Episode 35, Match Between the Eagle and the Leopard. Roger yawned, then laid on Blair's legs and closed his eyes. Roger immediately fell asleep. It was clear that he was exhausted. He constantly purred as he slept, as if he was a comforted kitten. Blair couldn't help but scratch Roger's chin. Bored from being all on her own, she pulled out her legs from underneath the leopard's abdomen. She then laid down on the ground next to Roger and closed her eyes to rest. In his sleep, Roger pulled Blair into his embrace, hugging her with all four of his limbs. When Lucius returned, he saw the beautiful female sleeping quietly in her admirer's arms. This peacefulness seemed even more heavenly when compared to the male's unpleasant snoring. Lucius suddenly felt jealous. This male leopard, Roger, didn't do a single thing, yet he got the female. He remembered overhearing that Roger saved Blair by chance when he was out hunting in the jungle. This guy was so lucky that others wanted to rip him into pieces. He also had a hand in saving the female. This time it was from the hands of a snake beast man, where her chances of survival were the lowest. However, the methods he used were indeed harsh. He wasn't thick-skinned enough to use this to request to stay by the female's side. Even if word got out, everyone would only criticize him, and females would have a worse impression of him. He was already surprised at Blair's attitude towards him. Humans had an intriguing ability to sense when others were looking at them. After Lucia stared at her for a long time, Blair suddenly woke up from a light sleep. Blair was surprised to see Lucius the moment she opened her eyes. She purposefully lowered her voice and asked, You're already back? Lucius opened his black beak and cooed. He then looked down and nudged a pile of wild fruits placed on a large leaf. Blair quickly gestured towards Lucius to be quiet, then carefully turned around to look at Roger and let out a sigh of relief after seeing that he was still asleep. He's exhausted. We shouldn't disturb him. Blair quietly got up from Roger's arms. Then, Roger's snoring stopped. He waved his limbs in the air as he tried to find something to hold on to. When he was only met with air, he wrapped his limbs around his body and continued snoring. Lucius transformed into a human and then said softly, Eat some wild fruits first. I'll roast some meat for you. Thank you. Blair began to nibble on the fruits. Although the wild apples looked small and insignificant, they were surprisingly sweet and crunchy and tasted much better than the ridiculously expensive apples she would find at the grocery store in her world. That was the taste of naturally ripened fruit. Curious, Blair picked up a red peach that had been washed clean and bit into it. The peach hadn't turned completely red, but its flesh was very soft. The moment she bit into it, the flesh was cleanly removed to reveal a crimson seed covered in grooves. There wasn't even a single drop of juice on it. Wow, Blair exclaimed. With an apple in one hand and a peach in the other, she said sincerely, These taste really good. The corner of Lucius's mouth curved up stiffly. Was she really a female? Weren't these just some normal wild fruits? How was she so satisfied with them? I'll go roast some meat, Lucia said as he picked up a pheasant, which had been washed clean and placed on a leaf. He then turned around and left. I'll come with you, Blair said in a muffled voice while nibbling on a peach. She then choked slightly when she looked up and saw Lucius's firm buttocks. Males were really too bold and unrestrained when out in the wild. They didn't have the sense to cover themselves up at all. Lucius crouched down outside the shelter, then turned around and glanced at Blair. It's sunny outside. Don't come out. Playing along, Blair nodded and said, Thank you, then. I feel bad that you're doing so much for me, even though we're barely acquainted. Without turning around, Lucius replied with his back facing her. It's only right that a male takes care of a female. The aroma of the roasted meat wafted through the air. Shortly after, Lucius came to Blair with a chicken that was roasted to a golden color. You can eat this. I didn't bring salt along with me, so it might not taste very good. It's so fragrant. I'm sure it's delicious. 
Blair politely took the chicken from him, lowering her eyes while doing so in case she saw something that gave her a sty. Usually, when out in the wilderness, the males would do all they could to display their reproductive organs in order to attract the gaze of females. Indeed, as one of the least romantic beast-man species, when Lucius realized the female was avoiding looking at that spot, he instantly transformed into an eagle and went to stand outside the shed like a statue. The taste of the roasted chicken was pretty good. Crispy on the outside and tender on the inside. Even though no seasonings were added, Blair finished it completely and much of her strength was restored. The horde of behemoths was still creating an earthquake below the cliff. From time to time, rocks broke off from the side of the cliff, adding an invisible layer of oppression to the area. The skies gradually darkened and the three moons made their appearance. Blair and Roger slept in the shed while Lucius stood outside by himself, the night wind curling up the feathers on his head. Blair hesitated for a long time, undecided as to whether she should ask Lucius to come in and sleep. It wasn't so much that she couldn't let go of her reservedness as a girl, but based on how much this world cherished females, her act would likely cause Lucius to misunderstand. It's getting late. You can come in and sleep. Blair finally said this, feeling much lighter after doing so. It would be too much of her to, after getting him to slave for her, forbid him from entering the shed he himself built. Lucius's body violently shook as he widened his round eyes and stared at Blair in disbelief. He indeed misunderstood her intentions. Blair smiled awkwardly. Please, I don't have other intentions. It's cold outside and I'm afraid you'll catch a cold out there. Lucius instantly resumed his cold disposition and, making thudding sounds, walked into the stone shed on his claws and crouched down in a corner. Blair laid down behind Roger's back. Roger turned around, pulled her into his arms, and purred in satisfaction. The ground was cold and hard, whereas the leopard's tummy was soft and warm. Halfway through the night, Blair crawled onto Roger's body to sleep on top of it. Roger also subconsciously cooperated, sleeping with his all fours up in the air. When dawn came, white smoke drifted atop the cliff. Stars had yet to fade away, and the orange sun was peeking over the horizon. With a purr, Roger stretched lazily. He could sense someone lying on top of him, someone light and soft. Without even opening his eyes, he already knew who it was. He had found his Blair. It felt wonderful holding his female to sleep. He suddenly felt it was pretty nice sleeping out in the wilderness, for Blair suddenly seemed very attached to him. Roger opened his eyes and quietly gazed at Blair, whose face was pressed against his chest, when suddenly he heard the breathing of a third person in the vicinity. Fur exploding, he instantly looked over. Lucius was still crouching in a corner. He opened his gray-colored eyelids and glanced at Roger before standing up and shaking his wings. Roger exploded in anger. He shifted his body and slowly removed Blair from his body. How dare he sleep in the place where they were sleeping? Lucius was blatantly challenging him. Bite him to death. Blair gently moaned as she rubbed her eyes and sat upright. Ah, morning has come. Roger let out a roar as he pounced on Lucius. The next second, with a growl, he was sent flying out of the shed. Blair froze. Lucius dusted his left wing and looked perfectly calm as though nothing had happened. Blair, who thought Lucius had beaten Roger up, quickly stood up and blocked in front of Lucius. Why are you two fighting? Outside, Roger let out a low growl and the indistinct sounds of his claws digging into the ground could be heard. Lucius's black beak opened, then tightly closed again. Roger transformed into a human and pulled Blair behind him in one swoop. How dare he sleep next to you? It's too despicable of him. I can sleep with you because I'm your mate. What right does he have? Blair scratched her messy head of hair. Uh, Roger, I was the one who asked him to come in. 
Roger's body violently trembled, feeling like he had been struck by lightning. He stared at Blair dumbfounded. Are, are you going to become mates with him too? At the last word, Roger sounded like he was about to cry. When Blair heard Roger's words, she didn't dare turn around to look at Lucius. She quickly explained, No, that's not it. There aren't other sheds to sleep in around here. I was worried he might catch a cold and fall sick. We're just sleeping anyway. Furthermore, we're so far apart and didn't even touch each other. Huh. Although this primitive society was bold and unrestrained, they were more conservative than even the feudal ancient times in some aspects. Roger's expression turned sunny again. He looked past Blair and gazed at Lucius, gloating. Did you hear that? My Blair isn't thinking of making you her maid. She's just young and doesn't know better. Lucius transformed into his human form and said blandly, I know. Although he was answering Roger's question, Lucius had specially transforms to make things clear, to make Blair feel assured. Roger pressed Blair's face towards his chest and revealed his teeth ferociously at Lucius. Don't transform for no good reason. Lucius coldly ignored him and strode out of the stone shed on those long legs of his. Although seething with anger, the only thing Roger could do was glare at him because he was no match for the eagle. Blair smacked her palm on Roger's forehead, making muffled sounds in his chest. Look, go of me, you're hurting my nose. Roger quickly let go of her, bent over, carefully examined her nose, then blew air on it with a pained expression. Did I knock into your nose? Sorry, I was too agitated just now. Does it hurt? Blair felt Roger was so mushy that goosebumps rose all over her body. She rubbed her nose and moved several steps away from him. Lucius was standing by the cliff, looking down at the horde of behemoths below. Blair shouted to him, Lucius, I thought of a solution to avoid the behemoths. Tell me if you think it'll work. Lucius turned around to face her. When Roger saw Lucius revealing his reproductive organ, which was bigger than his he started to become maniacal. Thankfully, Blair wasn't looking at that part, which made him feel slightly relieved. Blair had secretly peeked at Roger's members several times. He was merely young for now. One day it would become larger than this black eagle's. Blair said, cover my body with mud, then leave a lock of hair here. Perhaps they'll think I've been staying here and we can take the chance to leave. Lucius's eyes lit up worth a shot. 